Sutra. At that time, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva Mahasattva, wishing to restate his meaning, contemplated everywhere in the ten directions and spoke verses. Commentary. At that time, Universal Worthy Bodhisattva, this Mahasattva, this great Bodhisattva, wishing to restate his meaning, contemplated everywhere in the ten directions and spoke verses. He wished to explain his meaning again in different words, a little more clearly, and so he took a look at the basic natures and causes and conditions of living beings everywhere and spoke verses. Look how compassionate universal worthy Bodhisattva is towards us. Because he is afraid that we might not understand the meanings of the sutra, he explains the meaning again in verse. Sutra before the lions among men throughout the walls of the ten directions, in the past, in the present, and also in the future, with body, mouth, and mind entirely pure, I bow before them all, omitting, omitting none. With the awesome spiritual power of Samatabhadra's vows, I appear at the same time before every third come one and in transformed body as many as most of dust in lands, bow to Buddhas as many as most of dust in lands. In every mode of dust are Buddhas as many as most of dust, each dwelling amid a host of, Bud of Bodhisattvas. Throughout most of dust in endless drama realms, it is the same. I deeply believe they all are filled with Buddhas. With seeds of each and every sound, I everywhere let form words and phrases, wonderful and endless, which now and through all the compass of the future, praise the wide, deep sea of the Buddha's merit and virtue. Commentary The first vow of universal worthy Bodhisattva, Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva, is to worship and respect all Buddhas. And the second is to praise the first come ones. This section of text discusses these two vows. Before the lions among men throughout the walls of the ten directions, throughout means that everything is included north, south, east, west, northeast, southeast, northwest, southwest, and above and below make up the ten directions. Monasteries and temples are called places where members of the Sangha from the Ten Directions can live. The dwelling places of the Ten Directions, how can Sangha members come from above and below? Among the Sangha, there are many worthy sages who have been certified to the first, second, third, or fourth stages of Ahatri, also the stages of the Bodhisattva path. Sages who have certified to these stages can come from above and below. The Buddhas also live throughout the ten directions. Places where those of the ten directions constantly dwell contain Sangha members from many different directions, among 100 monks. On true cultivator can certainly be found, and there is certainly one Ahas among 1,000 monks. But it is difficult to recognize which one it is, and so in the large monasteries, when the Dharma masters go to the dining hall, dining hall to eat, it is not certain, but probable that amongst a few hundred or a thousand monks, there is at least one sage. Among three thousand monks, there are certainly three Ahas. Although Ahas do not want you to recognize them, Nonetheless, they act differently in many ways. They may manifest a body of great virtue. Their awesomeness causes others to be afraid, and their compartment demands respect. Or they may appear to be very stupid and filthy, so that one look at them is enough. These are ahas. When you are face to face with them, you cannot recognize them. But if afterwards you think, Oh, that one was an art. You will not be able to find him again. If you look for an art a second time, you will not be able to find him. Bodhisattvas are also like this, and so it is said. 
face to face with Quan Shi Yin when does not recognize him. Long ago, on Tian Tai Mountain in China, a magistrate of a prefecture, much like a governor of today, visited Kuo Qing Monastery and talked with the abbot. He said, in the past, Buddhist advice and has often appeared and lived among the people, but now also there are many monks. I have not seen a single Ahad or Bodhisattva. The abbot, whose name was Feng Khan, replied, Oh, so you wish to see Bodhisattvas and Ahas? That's very simple. Back in the kitchen here at Kuo Ching Monastery, the one who cooks is Manjushri Bodhisattva, and the one who boils the water is Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. The magistrate asked, what are their names? One is Han Shan, and the other is Shi Zhe. Replied the abbot, "I'm going to see them." The official replied quickly, "Okay," said the abbot. "If you want to see them, then go ahead." The magistrate went to the kitchen looking for Majusri and Universal Worthy. He asked, "Who are Han Shan and Shi Zhe?" The monk. There pointed and said, those two. When the magistrate looked, he saw two filthy and scraggly monks who had not shaved their heads. With their long hair, they looked much like present-day hippies. The only difference is that hippies have a blackness about them and are followed by demonic ghosts whereas the bodies of these two emitted a golden light. If you had the penetration of heavenly eye, you would see that hippies have much black energy about them, um, followed by demonic ghosts. Without the heavenly eye, of course, you would not know about this, but there is one test you can perform. If hippies have demonic ghosts with them, they will smell. Their stench will be very strong. They themselves are not aware of this, but if you are not hippie, you will be able to detect the strong smell. The magistrate bowed to Han Shan and Shi Zhe, although they were disheveled and unkempt. He believed the abbot, the abbot, and he was sure that they were Manjushri Bodhisattva and Universal Worthy Bodhisattva. When he bowed, Han Shan and Shi Zhe demanded, What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you bowing to us for? The magistrate replied, The abbot told me that you are the Bodhisattvas Manjushri and Universal Worthy. Please be compassionate and take me across. When they heard this, they shouted and laughed. Feng Khan talks too much. He's an old blabbermouth. Then they started back up, and as they retreated, the magistrate advanced forward. The two backed up towards the cliff called Moonlight, which had a steep stone face. When they reached the cliff, the door, a door opened up and they disappeared into it. The magistrate rushed to enter with them, but the door closed before he could do so. Just before they disappeared, the magistrate said, Be compassionate and take across this disciple. Han Shan and Shi Tzu replied, you don't bow to Amitabha Buddha. What are you seeking us for? The magistrate asked, Who is Amitabha Buddha? Han Shan and Shi Tzu answered, The abbot from Khan is a transformation of Amitabha Buddha, and he has come into this world to teach and transform living beings. You didn't bow to him, so what are you coming after us for? As soon as the magistrate heard this, he thought, Oh, the abbot is a transformation body of Amitabha Buddha. He could not get into the stone wall. The door had, that had opened for Han Shan and Shi Tzu had closed again. So when he went back to see the abbot, to bow to him and ask to be taken across. But when he arrived back at the abbot's quarters, it was too late. He found that the abbot had also perfected the stillness and had gone off to rebirth, and there was nothing he could do. He said, I didn't recognize what was right before me. 
Manjushri Bodhisattva has run off. Universal worthy is gone, and Amitabha Buddha has perfected the stillness. After the magistrate recovered from his grief and disappointment, he worked hard in his cultivation and did a good job. In all worlds throughout the ten directions, in the past, in the present, and also in the future, before the lions among men, says Universal Worthy Bodhisattva, with the purest and most sincere karma of body, mouth, and mind, I bow in worship before them all, omitting none. I bow throughout all the worlds in the ten directions, and in the three bearers of times of all the lions among men. I bow to all the Buddhas of the ten directions and the three bearers of time with the awesome spiritual power of Samatha Bhadra's vows. The cultivator can contemplate that his strength is not sufficient to worship all the Buddhas everywhere in the ten directions and the three bearers of time. But because I cultivate the awesome strength of universal worthies, conduct and vows, he aids me. It is from the awesome spiritual strength derived from universal worthies, conduct and vows that I appear at the same time before every first come one. So now, when I bow to one Buddha, I bow to all Buddhas. I am able to appear everywhere before all first come ones and bow to them. One of my bodies manifests bodies as numerous as the dust most in all the Buddha lands, and in transformed bodies as many as the most of dust in lands. I bow to Buddhas as many as the most of dust in lands. When bowing to one Buddha, one bows to immeasurable Buddhas. Bowing to immeasurable Buddhas is the same as bowing to one Buddha. This same process takes place in the path in the unspaced wells. But the one concerns health, and the other concerns cultivating the Dharma. When cultivating the contemplation of Dharma realm, one bows to all Buddhas everywhere. When you bow in one place, you are simultaneously bowing before all the Buddhas of the ten directions and the three bearers of time. In the unspaced house, one undergoes suffering in this way, but this is not the unspaced house, but the uninterrupted Dharma realm. The Dharma realm is uninterrupted. It is not that the ABC hell is uninterrupted. In every mode of dust are Buddhas as many as modes of dust. In each dust mode there are Buddhas as many as there are modes of dust in all lands. Each dwelling amid a host of bodhisattvas. Each dwells in the midst of an assembly of ahas, bodhisattvas, sound hearers, those enlightened to conditions, bhikshus, bhikshunis, and all living beings. Through most of dust in endless drama realms, it is the same. The dust most in each of the inexhaustible drama realms are also inexhaustible, and I deeply believe they all are filled with Buddhas. I deeply believe all Buddhas completely fill up worlds as numerous as all the fine modes of dust in the inexhaustible Dharma realms. With seeds of each and every sound, I everywhere let form words and phrases, wonderful and endless. Each of my bodies brings forth a sea of sounds to praise the Buddhas. My body is universal in need an inexhaustible number of subtle and wonderful sounds and phrases, which now and through all the compass of the future praise the wide deep sea of the Buddha's merit and virtue. Exhausting all the compass of the future, my voices praise the Buddha's extremely deep merit and virtue, which is measureless and boundless like a great sea. Sutra, flower garlands, supreme and wonderful, Music, perfumes, parasols, and canopies, and other decorations, rich and rare, to offer up to every first come one. Fine clothing and superior incense, powdered and burning incense, lamps and candles, each one heaped as high as a wonderfully high mountain. 
I offer completely to all Satyaka Das. Commentary We just discussed the vow to praise the first commands, and now we will explain the third vow to extensively cultivate the making of offerings, flower garlands, supreme and wonderful. When making offerings to the Buddhas, you should use the very best things. You should not offer to the Buddhas the things which you plan to throw away, but you should use many superior offerings, the very best, the most wonderful objects. When, wonder, when offering flowers, use all the kinds of wonderful flowers. Gardens are wreaths made up of flowers strung together, music, perfumes, bannersons, and canopies. You may also use all kinds of songs, hymns, and other kinds of music to praise the Buddhas. Perfumes include waters, oils, and bombs that are wrapped onto things so that they smell very fragrant. These two can be offered to the Buddhas. Canopies are like beautifully adorned umbrellas with tassels. These short coverings can be seen if you open your, your heavenly eye, for there are many of them suspended in space. Bodhisattvas make offerings like these to all the Buddhas, along with other decorations rich and rare. All kinds of adorned objects I offer up to every first come one, universally making offerings to all first come ones, as many as there are most of dust. Fine clothing, superior incense. I also offer the finest clothing and incense to the Buddhas, powdered and burning incense. Lamps and candles include incenses which are burned, like sandalwood, and the oil lamps which are offered before the Buddhas. Each one helped as high as a wonderfully high mountain. I make these offerings using the Dharmarium contemplation. When I offer these adornments, I contemplate their being equal in size to Mount Sumeru, or as a voluminous as the waters of the great sea. All these gifts I offer completely to all Satakatas. I offer all these precious objects to all Buddhas, all the first commands of the ten directions. Sutra, with a vast, great, supremely liberated mind, I believe in all the Buddhas of the three pillars of time, with the strength of Samantha, Bandra's conduct and vows. I make offerings to all thus commands everywhere. Commentary This verse explains that the cultivation of making offerings is vast and great. Since the offerings are vast and great, the mind that is able to understand them must also be a vast, great, supremely liberated mind. Although this mind cannot be understood by most, says universal worthy, nevertheless, I understand it. The mind with which I make offerings is the Dharma realm, and my offerings are Dharma realm offerings. With the mind of the Dharma realm, I make offerings to the Buddhas of the Dharma realm, and the Buddhas of the Dharma realm enter this mind of the Dharma realm. This describes the supremely liberated mind. I believe in all Buddhas of the three pillars of time. I believe with a true and inexhaustible mind. How profound is my mind of faith? Even when the obstructions of living beings are gone, when the afflictions of living beings are gone, when the realms of living beings are gone, and when the realm of empty space up to the limits of the drama realm cease to exist, still my mind of faith will continue unending. This is to believe in all Buddhas of the three builders of time, that is, all Buddhas of the past, present, and future. This belief is based on the strength of Samatabhadra's conduct and vows. Because I rely entirely on the strength of the practices cultivated and vows made by universal worthy Bodhisattva, I can make offerings on the scale of Dhammarium to the Buddhas of the Dhammarium. I make offerings such as these to all first commands everywhere.